Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to look at errors and exceptions in Python. My name is Mildred. In Python, we have syntax errors and we have exceptions. And during parsing, syntax error occurs and these errors are errors that occur when we violate a rule on how the code should be written. For instance, let's try to generate a syntax error. Let's say x is equal to 10 and then we say if x is equal to equal to 10 we want to print x is 10 else we'll print x is not 10 so we want to generate this syntax error by omitting the column that is supposed to be here and when I save this and I run we're going to have syntax error expected column now take note of how the error is displayed. We always have a caret sign under the problematic line and it tells us the line. So the first thing it tells us the line where the error occurred, the syntax error and what was expected or what was missing or what it is supposed to be. So when we read our error messages we have an idea of what line violates the rule, what are we supposed to do there and here we just have to put a column to remove the error. There are several other type of errors like name errors, value errors and things like that. Let's try to generate things like um, indentation error. If I put something like print x like this, save, I'll clear and run, we'll have something like syntax error expected column. Syntax error comes before the indentation error so I'll correct the syntax error so that we can see the indentation error and then we'll have indentation error expected block after if. So this is how errors are displayed in Python. We also have exceptions, which are error that occurs during execution. So the code can be syntactically correct, but then they might result in error. So let's see an example of how we can generate an exception in Python. Let's say we have a list of students like this, and the students we have are Mary, let's say Mary, Bob and John. So I'll put this in quotes. And let's say we use the delete statement to delete the list. And then we come to the next line and try to print that list out. We should have an error because this is syntactically correct, but during execution it deletes the student and then we ask it to print what was deleted and then that is not possible. And so when I run, I'm going to have name error. Name student is not defined. So this is an example of an exception that occurs during execution. So it's still the same syntax, it tells us the problematic line and then it gives us the detail of that error. It gives us the name of the error, which is name error. So how do we handle these errors and exceptions in Python? In Python we have something we call the try except block and optionally a finally block. It is written like this, so I'm going to delete this and I'll put a try statement. You write try a column and then within the try block we are going to put in all of the code we want to test for errors. So every code we write that might result in an error is going to be in the try block. So say student equal to, let's just use this and then we say delete student and then we say print student. So we know that this is going to result in an exception and then we'll have the accept block and then in the accept block we'll say print error student is not defined but because we know in advance what kind of error this will generate we put student is not defined we can just put something like error and error occurred during execution so this is the basic way that you will not actually use professionally but this is how we do the try accept block so now it is not going to fail with the kind of error messages we have, but it's going to fail with the error message we ask it to print. And so we don't have those cryptic error messages. And this is how you want to handle your error in um, production where you don't want to terminate codes because of um, something. We can also put like an else here to say else. And when we have else, we execute something if no, if no errors were raised. And so let's say else print no error occurred and if we want to print something or do something after everything and we say regardless of what happens in the try except block print something let's say finally 
block executed and when I clear we we'll always have this printed out the finally block no matter what happens in the try block and so when I run I will have an error occurred during execution finally block executed things like that so this is the syntax we can have several except blocks let's give an example let's say I want to catch a specific error we, we don't want to have like just a general error let's say we know in advance that a name error may occur we want to catch name error like this and we we'll say name error and what we want to do now is to print student is not defined when I save this and I clear we are going to have that variable student is not defined because we caught the name error what if we use value error then this error is not going to be caught because it is a name error and not a value error and when I save and I run I'm going to go back to the basics of like an unhandled exception when I had no um, except block so I'm going to have the cryptic error message printed out because I'm catching just the value error not the name error we can say we want to catch several types of error let's say name error value error we want to catch things like runtime error there are many errors like that and we want to give it a name and then we say has an alias has e so we want to use this e in our print statement and we want to say print error and then maybe we want to say error i want to print the exact error message error e like this and then when i clear here and i run i'm going to have that printed error e now why is it printing error e out like this because i put it has so say let's say print error and then a comma e so this is supposed to be the correct way of writing it so clear and run and i have error name student is not defined so there are several ways you can print out your error or you can return something but something that is understandable especially in production if we have all of this, you can have another except block that will catch errors that are not um, mentioned, like any other error that occurs that is not a name error, a value error, or a runtime error. Let's say you want to print something like unknown error. So let's say I'm not catching name error. So this time I want it to just print out unknown error instead of um, failing back with a cryptic error message. So when I say run, it will say unknown error. So you get the idea of how we do things like this. So you use the try block, put all your block of code that might result in an exception in the try block. And the except block, one several except blocks, you can actually handle selected exception like the name error as we just did or like a value error or several group of types of error. And then another except block that handles any error that is not caught so that you don't end up in an unhandled exception. We can actually raise an exception using the raise keyword. Let's say for instance we have um, x is equal to let's say input and we want to say enter a number we want this to be a number and we want to say if x is not equal to or let's say if type of x if type of x is not an int we want it to raise type error only integers are allowed like this so you can use the raise like this to raise um, an exception in Python and so when you say enter a number and I put instead of a number I enter a name big and it's now say type error all the integers are allowed so you can raise errors like this in Python we have built-in exceptions in Python and I'm not going to go into detail about the built-in exceptions because it's going to be part of your assignment we have exceptions like arithmetic error where um, it's an error that is raised when an error occurs in numeric calculations we have things like floating point error when a floating point calculation fails we have things like index error uh, when it's raised when an index of a sequence does not exist a lot of inbuilt python errors that you will see we have error like keyboard interrupt i'm just naming errors that you see most frequently keyboard interrupt where it's raised when you press ctrl c or you press ctrl z or delete during a process so these are the kind of um, inbuilt python exceptions that you will encounter and i want you to read more about them when they are raised understand them and you'll be able to debug your code and you're able to read error messages and you're going to understand them so this is where we end this lesson thank you and see you in the next lesson